When you think about the Xenoblade X combat system, maybe one mechanic comes to your mind. Overdrive. Overdrive is the central and arguably most important combat feature in Xenoblade Chronicles X, and understanding how to use it will drastically increase both combat success and how much fun the game is. Most players during a first playthrough won't understand it at all thanks to the game not explaining anything to you and as such they'll miss out on one of the most fun features that makes X a legitimately great game with a ton of build diversity. In this video I want to explain everything about Overdrive to you so you can set up your own Overdrive builds to take advantage of the mechanic. I'll also show some very beginner friendly Overdrive builds that you can access very early in the game depending on the class route you take. If you enjoy guide content like this on the Xeno series, please be sure to subscribe because it helps out the channel so much and all support is greatly appreciated. With that said, let's get into it. It's pretty easy to see why most people might think Overdrive isn't all that useful when first played. Upon beating Chapter 5, you will get access to this mechanic and chances are you don't have a lot of good build options just yet. In order to activate Overdrive in combat, you need 3000 TP, which is basically the default limit you have and what most players are likely to still have after Chapter 5. Then you need to press the center button on the art palette. Upon activation, you are given 15 seconds by default to use it. It's confusing and has this random counter at the bottom, and for most players it will expire with nothing notable happening and they'll just mark it off as useless. But let me tell you, this could not be further from the truth, and understanding this mechanic can make you absurdly powerful. At its most basic level, activating Overdrive drastically reduces all of your art cooldowns as seen by the cooldown bonus above the art palette on the right side, and allows you to access more powerful tertiary cooldowns for your arts which independently multiplies all of your damaging art power by 400% and can give you 20 extra seconds on auras and debuffs, along with an effect two tiers higher. For certain buff arts, it can also allow immediate reuse which is actually more important than you might think it is in Overdrive especially. You will also notice it reduces enemy resistance to debuffs and has a damage multiplication factor also above the art palette that can further increase your art damage. Having arts recharge very quickly and do more damage certainly seems strong in a vacuum, especially because it allows you to easily charge arts, but for only 15 seconds and without other benefits that doesn't seem like it will always be the most useful. Well, let me tell you why that's wrong. When you activate Overdrive, the number in the center of the screen will start counting up. The higher the number gets, the stronger all three of the effects above the art palette will also get. This means even shorter cooldowns, even more damage multiplication, and even less enemy resistance to debuffs. But then you might be asking, how do you build this counter up effectively and how is it useful if it only lasts 15 seconds? Well, there are ways to extend duration of overdrive depending on your own art combinations, and you can also reactivate overdrive for another 3000 TP to extend overdrive even further. But more on that later. Let's talk about how to build the counter. So in most normal scenarios, the counter will start at zero. If you have the skill Phantom Counter or Overdrive Count Up as traits on your weapon or armor, you can actually start Overdrive with some count already, but otherwise it will start at zero. By using either a yellow, orange, or purple art, you can increase the Overdrive Counter by the amount of hits of that art. Yellow arts are ranged arts, orange arts are melee arts, and purple arts are debuffs. The one exception to this is if you use a yellow art into an orange art, or an orange art into a yellow art, you won't get any count. The damage bonus will also be negated, so you never want to use a yellow into an orange art, or an orange into a yellow art, at all. If you want to swap between melee and ranged arts, make sure to use one of the other three kinds of arts in between them to actually get the count increase and damage bonus. For area of effect damaging arts, for each hit of the art done to a different enemy, the count will also increase by one, which can be very powerful against a lot of enemies. Count will max out at 100 and give you a 500% additive bonus to damage, 5 times the amount of reduced cooldowns, and 100% resistance reduction on enemies. As such, building count is very important to get the maximum amount of bonuses from Overdrive. So is there a way to build up count more efficiently? Well, yes there is. If you use a green art, which is a buff art, before a yellow, orange, or purple art, the amount of count gained by using these damaging arts is doubled. So each hit will increase the count by two instead of just one. When building count, using green arts before damaging arts is very beneficial to increasing your count faster. So again, how does any of this help overdrive only naturally last 15 seconds? Well, fortunately, you can extend duration while in the middle of overdrive, and continuously extending your overdrive duration is typically called infinite overdrive, and it's something everyone who plays this game should learn how to do. 
So the timer for overdrive is on the right side of the counter. Once the gauge depletes, overdrive will be over. However, if you are to use an aura, which is a blue art, you can extend the duration of overdrive by a tenth of a second multiplied by whatever the current count is. This means if the count is 50, you can extend overdrive by 5 seconds, and if the count is maxed at 100, you can extend overdrive by 10 seconds. Additionally, using buffs, which are green arts, will extend duration by a 20th of a second multiplied by whatever the count is. So at a count of 50, this is 2.5 seconds, and at a count of 100, this is 5 seconds. But that's not all. If a buff affects the entire party, it will count that buff 4 times total, which means that if your entire party is all alive and you apply a buff to everyone, you can extend the duration of overdrive by 10 seconds at a count of 50, and by 20 seconds if the count is maxed out. This makes party-wide buffs especially useful to have on your character if you're in a class that learns one. Additionally, this can make buff effects that have immediate reuse be pretty effective for extending your overdrive duration quite a bit. One of the most effective and powerful overdrive arts, for example, is the Knife Art Smooth Recovery, a party-wide buff that has immediate reuse as its effect, so it can be used three times in a row at tertiary cooldown. And it also increases the counter by four or eight, since it counts as hitting all party members with the effect, which most buffs do not do. This can give you a huge burst of overdrive duration. Combining the effect of duration increases with the ability to increase your count makes green arts very important in overdrive. The hardest part of getting into an infinite overdrive state is the start of activation since you need to quickly build your count so you can increase your own duration. Another extremely important factor of overdrive are purple arts. So purple arts are normally just debuff arts, but they can be very useful in overdrive since using them while overdrive is active will increase your TP or tension points by 10 times whatever the current count is per hit of the purple art. This means that if a purple art hits 3 times and you are at maxed overdrive, which is 100 count, you will gain 3000 TP back instantly. That is 10 times 100 times 3. That is an absurdly powerful effect and can allow you to keep your TP while using overdrive so you're able to use TP arts during overdrive or just activate overdrive again if you're running low on duration. Some purple arts also have immediate reuse as their effect which can be particularly powerful for building up TP if needed. Keep that in mind when deciding overdrive builds. It may also be worth looking at arts that can help build TP as well for easier ways to keep up infinite overdrive with setups that may not have the best ways to build duration or strong purple arts to restore TP for TP arts. All in all, the most fundamentally important things to understand about overdrive is how to build count, how to increase your duration, and how to restore TP. There are other bonus combo effects that overdrive allows you to use, and for the sake of being complete, I'll discuss those now. If you use a purple art into a yellow or orange art, you will increase appendage damage by 50%. Not overly useful since Core Crusher is one of the strongest skills in the game, but it is an option. If you use a blue art into a green art, which is an aura into a buff, you will restore your own health by 10%. This also isn't the most useful since you should be able to keep your health up with soul voices pretty easily during overdrive, but it is there if you want an additional way to restore your own health. If you use a blue art into a purple art, you'll increase the debuff duration by 25%. Again, not the most useful since with Overdrive's cooldown bonuses, you can likely keep any debuff applied easily, but it is an option. Continuously using orange arts back to back will increase your experience gain from the battle, and continuously using ranged arts back to back will increase your class experience gain. This will increase 10% for each back to back and stack at 200%. This can be useful for class rank early on in the game, but regular experience isn't really that helpful. Additionally, you can get bonuses if your party members are also in overdrive, but that isn't super helpful with AI teammates most of the time unless you have some very specific late game setups. Regardless though, if you do have two party members in overdrive, you will get a 50% bonus to your soul voice activation rate. If you have three party members in overdrive, you will gain an additional 50 TP per hit of an art in case you really just need extra TP that badly. If you have four party members in overdrive, the whole party will get a very special buff called Super Armor, which cuts all damage in half and grants immunity to mobility debuffs such as Stagger, Topple, Knockback, Launch, and Flinch. This can be very useful online, especially if you're running against certain Nemesis fights or something like that, but it's not going to be the most useful offline, obviously. There are, of course, some more advanced things you can do with overdrive, but we'll stick to all the essentially important knowledge in this video, otherwise we'd be here all day. So that should cover all the effects of overdrive and what to do during it to keep overdrive up efficiently to take advantage of it. 
So let's discuss some build options that are very beginner friendly, as well as some things you can craft or do to make your life much easier with Overdrive. The route I always like to go when playing the game is Mastermind. Mastermind gets access to some really good skills and a really great way to keep infinite overdrive. To show off this build, I'm going to use some pretty basic equipment here. Just some level 30 weapons with my only augments as appendage crushers, which you can craft for 124 tickets. 124 tickets, if you're playing online, is really easy to get, so if you want to have some appendage crushers for some extra damage, that's really easy to do. I have max TP up on this build, but I'm going to remove it just so I have only 3,000 TP, just to show you the effectiveness of this build regardless. And I have no other augments besides that, just some shop gear. Going through the art list, you can get all of these pretty easily through using these weapons. Full specs is probably going to be your best aura option. I would definitely recommend that for the TP boost. Smooth recovery is the crux of this build because it allows you to keep overdrive duration up a lot. And it also gives you count. Make sure you are running this build. I think you need to do a fin Arena's Affinity mission to get this art. Make sure you get this art. It's super important. Gravity Cloak is an AoE buff art. It helps keep up your duration if you need don't have smooth recovery up. Absorber Kit Skin is a throwaway green art that's just going to allow us to use yellow arts and orange arts for, for count and duration. Black Butterfly is my main damaging art for melee attacks just because it does a lot of damage. It's guaranteed to be ether, and it also lowers enemy ether defense. The reason it's ether is important, actually. I also have Ether Blast as my main, main damage art. It's the TP art of this build. Beam Barrage is my count builder, and Myopic Screen is our purple art to give us our TP back if we need it. This is pretty much the setup I'd recommend you run. Maybe you could replace Re Absorber Skin with something else, but otherwise run the other seven arts. The skills I have are Inner Search, just to increase my TP further. Core Crusher, which is an amazing skill that's going to boost all of our Aether damage by quite a lot if we're targeting appendages. Secondary Accelerator, to give us access to our cooldowns a little bit more using arts, which is very helpful for this build. And High Tension, as you see, can boost TP even further. But just for the sake of showing off the build with only 3,000 TP and that you don't need it, I'm going to remove it. But of course, it will make it easier if you do run it. And like I said, you can get all of this just going the Enforcer into Mastermind build class here. You don't need access to anything else. You get everything that I just showed off through that class. And if you start the game with that class and get past Chapter 5, you should have access to pretty much anything you need for this build. And this should allow you to pretty much take down pretty much any enemy you want in the game. And as long as you use Myopic Screen towards the end of the fight, you should get most of your TP back even if you don't have extra TP to use. So you'll be able to overdrive for the next fight. Typically what you want to do is start off overdrive, use Absorber Skin, and then use Beam Barrage to just build up your count to a quick 10. And then you want to try to build up your count just a little bit further. I get interrupted by a stagger there, I believe, so I start using Smooth Recovery to increase my duration and my count. I use it three times in a row. Gets us up to 30 count, then you can use Beam Barrage again here to increase the count even further. We use another green art, of course, and then we use Myopic Scream, which is going to give us a lot of TP back. You see we almost have all the TP back that we need. We use Gravity Cloak again into another green art, and then I try using Smooth Recovery to try to increase my duration. Unfortunately, two of my allies die here. That's not really a big deal. I still get four count per use, and I get a lot of duration because HP is still alive. I use Myopic Screen again into my blue art, so I get even more duration. And we also have almost max TP again. I just gotta use my optic screen one more time before I use my main damage art here. Black Butterfly is the four hit art. It gives us eight count. And after all that's done, we can just Aether Blast for the kill because it has a very high scaling multiplier on it. And we also have Core Crusher, which is gonna make the Aether damage do even more. As you saw right there, I could have kept Overdrive up forever with that build. And that makes the Mastermind route one of the absolute best routes you can go early on in the game. Another really easy overdrive build you can go is the Full Metal Jaguar route. Honestly, you don't even need your cross to do this. You could also just do this setup with Elma, and you always get her no matter what. So if you want to go a different route from Full Metal Jaguar or Mastermind, which I think are the easiest routes to keep up an infinite overdrive build, then you can also run Elma until it gets a bit easier for the other routes you could take. These are just the basic ones. We solved my ground guild gear there. I'm not using anything special here. No special augments or anything like that. Just appendage crushers at most. Shadowrunner is going to be the main aura art we've got here. Blood Sacrifice is a great art for giving ourselves extra TP over the course of this battle. Full Metal Jaguar has great ways to keep up overdrive and keep TP. It's very, very beginner friendly for this. Even more beginner friendly than Mastermind. Ghostwalker is an incredible art that allows you to take on enemies much, much higher level than you as long as you can keep it up because it gives you guaranteed evasion against attacks. Primer is a really good art for giving you TP. It has very short cooldown and it's a great green art to use before other arts. Executioners are going to be your main damage art with this build. It's the highest scaling art you've got. Lighting Slinger is the main count builder, low cooldown, six hit ranged art. 
Stream Edge is a good melee TP art that you can also run, and Side Slash is an amazing art, immediate reuse debuff art that you can use to get a lot of TP back very quickly. Would definitely recommend these arts if you want to run the Full Metal Jaguar build here. Once again, the skills I have are stuff you can all get from the Full Metal Jaguar path. Combo Gunner is just a good damaging thing that I have here that you don't necessarily need it. Um, Hellbound and Phantom Counter are really good. It increases your count and increases overdrive duration, which is very, very beginner friendly, like I already said. And you can also boost maximum TP with this other skill I've got here. But like I said, I'm just going to run with 3000 TP just to show you that you can do this without having any ways to increase your TP unless you just want to make it easier for yourself. So this is not very difficult to keep up with Full Metal Jaguar at all. You've got some very, very lenient arts that you can use here. Lenient skills that help you out so much. You get a free 12 count when you activate Overdrive. Primer and the Sliding Slinger is probably the basic thing you want to start off with. And then an early Ghost Walker just to keep yourself alive, obviously. It is worth noting if you have Elma, she can't learn Ghost Walker. She gets Ghost Factory instead, but that's arguably even better. Because that is a party-wide buff, so of course that will give you even more duration. That Stream Edge was really poorly timed. I wasn't supposed to use it like that. So as you can see, even though I'm low on duration, I can just infant activate Overdrive again because of Side Slash and Blood Sacrifice giving me TP back. And despite the fact that Blood Sacrifice cuts your health, as long as I keep up Ghost Walker, he'll never be able to hit me anyway, so it doesn't matter what my health value actually is. And once we get to this point, once you get higher count, it's very easy to keep up Overdrive as you might expect. Blood Sacrifice even counts as a self-hit, so you can actually get Overdrive duration and count that way. And like I said, the main thing with this build is just keep up Ghost Walker so you can't get hit. But even if you don't have Ghost Walker yet, you can still run a pretty good build with this. You just have to be a bit more careful about using Blood Sacrifice, whereas if you have Ghost Walker, you can pretty much just use it whenever you want to. Side Slash can keep your TP up very, very easily. It's two hits, and if you have the Tertiary cooldown, you can get six hits out of it for 6,000 TP, which is very broken. And that's just another setup you can run for very, very easy overdrive in this game if you take that route on your class tree instead. I think those are going to be the easiest paths you can run, but don't let that stop you from experimenting. But if you're early on in the game, you can do those as soon as you pass Chapter 5 very easily. And like I said, if you want to craft augments to make things easier, max TP up is extremely easy to craft. For the maximum max TP up, you only need 5 fleecy fur, as you see here. And there, it's just super easy to get some extra TP in this game if you really want to run these setups. An extra TP can make all the other routes much, much easier, whereas those two can easily be done with only 3,000 TP, as you just saw. Overdrive makes the game vastly more fun, and some other things you can run that can be useful is... Arts gain TP? I don't remember the exact route to build them, I think they're a bit expensive, but you can get up to 200 TP for art uses, which can make any Overdrive route infinitely easier as well. And once you're able to mix and match weapons, you can set up some really nice and fun customizable builds. I think that about covers everything for me. I hope this guide was useful in showing how to use Overdrive and showcasing some pretty easy to set up builds you can access very early in the game. There's basically a limitless possibility of builds that you can access later in the game and a lot of skills that you can use to make your life much easier too. I hope you all enjoyed this guide and learned something useful and want to go back and jump into Xenoblade X again right away. And if you enjoyed, please be sure to like, comment, subscribe, and look forward to more content on the series. I appreciate all the support, and thank you all so much for watching, and have a wonderful day.